What's going on everybody? The topic of today's video is why your health is your top priority. So, I just finished a workout and meditation session just before sitting down to film this video. And I think perhaps some of the endorphins that were released from that workout or maybe that uh, balance that I found during my meditation is what inspired today's video. But those two things really did get me thinking today, which is why I wanted to sit down and make this video, which potentially is, in my opinion, the most important video that I have ever made before. And the reason is because the truth behind the title of this video is that your health must be your number one priority in life. I know I have harped on it. I know I have given you guys tips, tools, and strategies to take back control of your mental, physical, and spiritual health. And today I want to go in depth as to why I feel as though this is the most important thing you can do for yourself. So it should pretty much already just be assumed, but without your health, you can't really attain many of the things that you are going to want to attain in life. Now, I am not saying that if you are not healthy or maybe you have some physical disability, some physical limitation that prevents you from doing certain things, there are countless people with limitations and disabilities that go on to achieve incredible things. I mean, they've got things like the Special Olympics and countless other organizations that promote people with particular handicaps because your handicaps can become your greatest strengths. But most people out there just let their bodies diminish and decay without keeping them in optimal condition. And why is that such a problem? Well, if you are the type of person who is bought in to this story that the uh, government society has taught you that you go to work for 40 years and you put in your time, by the time you turn 65, you know, assuming that you worked, started working when you were 25, you know, all the way up until you are, are 65, that's, that's 40 years of work that you are going to have all of this money that you have been saving for your retirement. And then you can go and enjoy your time however you should please. Now, you guys know on this channel, that is not a society, uh, excuse me, a societal norm that I promote. It's not one that I endorse. And to be honest, it's not even one that I believe in. I personally think that societal norm is a crock of shit. And here's why. Because most people that have been, you know, just working these nine to five dead end jobs for 40 years, typically aren't taking care of themselves during that 40 year period. They're not happy with their job, which makes them lackadaisical and lazy in their personal life and their health falls by the wayside. Which means that by the time that retirement comes at 65, they are unfit, they are unhealthy. You know, most of these people are, you know, have neck or back problems or they need a cane or a walker, or they walk with a limp, they move very slowly. I can tell you guys one thing. I am not putting off my retirement to this, you know, 
far off destination. That's not the way I am going to live my life. I want to feel good now. I want to feel good tomorrow when I wake up and I want to feel good the following day. To me, one of the most powerful quotes that I've ever heard was behind one of the people that I look up to and he is one of my mentors and that is Jocko Willink. He is the author of the book, Extreme Ownership. If you've not read it, it is absolutely unbelievable. But one thing that Jocko Willink is quoted for saying is that discipline equals freedom or discipline equals pleasure. And it is absolutely true. The more you actually are putting in the work, your life can be surrounded by having all of these things that you need to do, which can actually provide you freedom. So like for me, I knew that today when I woke up, I wanted to get outside with the dogs for about an hour and 15 minutes, take a walk with them, get some sun in. I wanted to listen to Built by Titans, which is a book that I have been listening on audiobook to by Tim Ferriss. It's absolutely amazing. Actually, the part that I just finished up was Tim and Jocko Willink um, going back and forth in an interview that Jocko did on the Tim Ferriss show uh, podcast that he has. And uh, I wanted to, after the walk, I wanted to exercise for an hour. So I did 30 minutes on the rowing machine. Then I jumped on the elliptical and in between the elliptical, I was jumping on the elliptical and then onto the mat to do some mat exercises and going back in between with those for about another 30 minutes, uh, 35 minutes. Then I did a nice cold shower like Wim Hof does, the Iceman. If you guys want to know about, you know, these plunge pools like Tony Robbins does or the, you know, an ice dip. I took a nice cool shower this morning and something that I recently had heard uh, in this book, Built by Titans, is somebody was teaching their son how to do these uh, cold plunges and they would go and take showers. Um, in the morning together and the dad would run the water really hot and the son would say to the dad, oh, so good, as he's like shivering from the cold. And that actual quote like stuck with me that he says, so now every time that I take one of these cold baths or cold showers, I say the same thing when I'm just absolutely freezing. It's like, oh, so good. And it makes me laugh. It kind of puts me in this peaceful, zen out mental state so that the cold water is not, you know, making me freeze to death. So after I finished my cold rinse and my cold shower, I did 20 minutes of meditation. Each of those things that I did today was focused around my health. It was focused around me feeling good. This is something that I need to do every day to perform and present myself in a peak performance state. And what does that mean? That means that I want to have a balanced, peaceful state of mind, I want to be happy, optimistic, and you guys know already that it's not possible to do that every single day and you know you're always cheery, you're always positive, you're always upbeat and ready to go. But we do these things to limit the potential um, downsides of falling into a negative momentum loop where you've got, you know, anxiety going on, negative thoughts or negative feelings that you're experiencing because of challenges or stressful situations in your life. So really the backbone of your life is your health. You can't expect to perform, um, you know, at your career or when you're working on, on pursuing your purpose or your passion. You are not going to perform at the best of your abilities if you are not taking care of your health. And I, again, want to stress this. I am not just 
talking about your physical health because I know some people that are extremely physically healthy, but mentally their mind is so wrapped up. They're like just a ball um, of yarn that is just completely knotted and tangled and they can be their own worst enemy because of their anxiety and you know some of them experience depression. So they may be healthy physically, but they're not healthy mentally. And then the final um, piece of that is you know a spiritual um, or a oneness, a feeling, a sense of that you are part of a bigger greater collective a greater good that your life has a deeper meaning now this does not mean that you have some you know uh it has to be some uh, you believe in some god or some deity or whatever it might be um over you know overseeing you or overseeing everything and you know the almighty the all-powerful it doesn't need to be this hooey thing if you're not religious for me again it comes to um, a sense of spirituality, a sense of oneness, a sense of community, a sense of to being and togetherness. You guys know I've said it before. I'll say it again. I believe that we come from an emanation of a universal energy, which I believe to be love. And that comes out of nothing. We are blinked into existence and then we blink out of existence. Something I actually heard today in this book that I was reading or listening to rather was that the stars that we are seeing, the light from the stars that we are seeing emitted, many of those stars have died already millions of years ago. Just think about that. Think about your place in the actual universe in the cosmos how infinitesimally small we are in the bigger picture of thing things excuse me if you need help doing this and you live in a city escape the city limits or like for us here on the west coast we can just drive out into the desert where there's no street lights and then just do me one favor look up it is a great big world out there and it is a beautiful world and there are beautiful things in store for you in this life and that you have yet to create and put out into the world and you are going to do that by becoming the embodiment of physical emotional and spiritual health you need to set that intention make it clear feel it in your heart feel it in your mind and feel it throughout your body and then follow through those thoughts and your intentions and the abundance health mentality with actions. So make sure you are getting up and you are exercising at least five, you know, four to five days per week, the majority of the week. Make sure that you are practicing meditation every day. Don't take any days off. This is not a five or six day a week or 80%, 20% thing. This is an everyday thing. And also make sure that you are consuming high quality, healthy, organic, and alkaline based food. That means mostly greens, mostly greens. Don't get the majority of your protein from animal sources you will feel better you'll have more mental clarity even meat and I'm not I'm not like a vegetarian or a vegan but the days that I eat meat versus like just having a light salad which with a bunch of veggies and some balsamic vinaigrette I just feel better I have more energy I uh, I, I had a a cheat day lunch one day and had a bunch of chicken wings. I love chicken wings. And man, I will tell you what, I only had one order, a couple French fries, but afterwards I was so tired. I was so lazy. I did not feel like myself. And honestly, I didn't like the way that I felt afterwards. So you guys, if you're not sure how certain foods are making you feel, just experiment. Try cutting something out for a little bit and replacing it with something else. You know, See how it's doing on your gastrointestinal and your stomach. Is it causing you an upset stomach or is it clouding your mind or whatever? I know when I eat too much sugar, I get anxiety. It just caused my mind to go absolutely crazy. But that's why you want to make sure you are consuming good food the majority of, of the time. Now, 
Give yourself a cheat day. That'll kind of give you that one day that you can go all out, eat whatever you want, eat whatever, whenever you want, and as much as you possibly want. But save it all for that one day if you can't exercise some sort of self-discipline throughout the week. I'm telling you, if you guys start to do just the few things that I have mentioned here, whereas again, it is just, you know, and, and I didn't really say something that you should do, but you should spend some time outside in nature, 30 minutes a day outside under the sun. Absolutely. Get that in. That is healthy for you. So 30 minutes a day, minimum out in nature. I recommend an hour, 30 minutes to an hour, five days, four to five days a week of exercise, consuming a good, healthy, organic, alkaline-based diet at least six days out of the week. Give yourself a cheat day and then do something else for yourself. So that is another part of mental and physical health. Do something you want to do. Do something you enjoy doing. I personally do those things each and every day. You should be doing things you love each and every day. Wake up excited about the things that you want to do, the passion or purpose that you are pursuing. And I am telling you, your life will improve. Follow these simple steps. It's going to happen. So my question for you guys is what are you doing to take control of your mental health? Is it a practice? Is it something that you've been doing for a long time or you just started trying? It's really, really working well. Something that I incorporated into my healthy routine was drinking green juice every day, you guys. Juicing greens for me was a game changer. I don't really like to eat salads all that much, you guys. I mean, I'll, I'll knock them down so that I get the actual energy and nutrients from those. But for me, drinking green juice, um, man, that has been just an absolute game changer for me. You know, taking the supplements that your body might be lacking, do some blood tests, do them regularly so you can find if there's inconsistencies or things that, you know, again, you might be lacking. The actual, uh, the sun, getting some good vitamin D, that is something so many people are nutrient deficient in, which is so easy. You can just go outside and get it from the sun. You don't need to take an actual supplement, but if you don't know your chemistry, make sure you're going in, getting your physicals, taking care of your physical health. It's about preventative maintenance, not reactive maintenance. You guys, don't wait for something to go wrong to get your mind, body, and your spirit and your soul in mental, physical, and spiritual health. That is how you become the embodiment of health and you take back control of your life and your happiness. So if you would like my help with setting up a new routine that can set your life in a new direction, I would love to hear from you. So feel free to reach out to me by heading over to my website at thebalancedalpha.com, signing up for whatever coaching session works best for you there. But until then, take control of your physical health, make it your number one priority, and make 2020 the best year yet. And until then, I can't wait to see you guys next time. Stay balanced and I will see you guys soon.